may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you so much, worship team. Shall we appreciate the worship team and the and the band for doing such a wonderful job? Allow me also to appreciate one more team. Um, I really love this particular team because they work very hard. Most of the time, I know they are here before everyone else is here to get to serve us and to get to minister to us. Help me appreciate the sound team and all the work that they get that they get to do. By the way, uh, sound guys, uh, this is part of a bribe. Eh? Uh, Dio sound yangu kwe sawa, sindio? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I know the Bible says faith comes by hearing, so I need to make sure that I'm hard. Um, even tonight. Are you well? Uh, Pasi, you said this is day five. Day five of this particular conference. And I'm sure that you guys have taken in a lot um, in the days that you have been here. Uh, this accompanying team, Nilisikiokita Mbogi. Eh, kitu kayo, eh? Uh, I came with three friends of mine, uh, three wonderful, do you want me to say younger men so that I'm considered as young? How do, okay, three wonderful younger men. If you don't mind just standing up and waving to this congregation. Wafanyeni uh, tuivo. There is none of them who has confirmed to me that this is the one. So ladies, in case you want to talk to them after this, yeah, you're more than welcome to, you're more than welcome. You're more than let me tell you, whether the beards are visible or not, there is faith um, in between that. But very, very delighted to be here. Um, I would have desired to come with my wife tonight, but she was sitting for an exam uh, later, uh, somewhere close to late this evening. But she might be joining us at some point. I'm not exactly sure, but she might be joining us at some point. If I see her, uh, I will just let you guys know so that you know that I'm not by myself. But I'm, let me also to thank uh, Pasi uh, for the invitation to come. It's always a risk to invite anyone on a pulpit to speak to people, especially young people. But also to honor uh, the bishop of this house and the man of God in this house, uh, Bishop Jimmy Kimani and his family, uh, for not only the ministry that they... Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Watu wa video. Yeah, watu wa video anachukua, eh? But but also for so many risks that he has, he has taken, and one of those risks is me. Uh, years back, uh, my wife used to be in the worship team right here at Deliverance Zimmerman, and I had to meet the bishop and let him know that there is a girl in the worship team that I am eyeing. Kibera, uh, huh? Kibera, you have this evidence. Eh? Some 20 years back, I came to see yeah, I came to see the bishop and tell him there is somebody and he told me to relax. Then the following year he gave me permission. And now I've been married for 13 years um, to a wonderful, wonderful woman of God. I'm really thankful to God. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. And Pastor, may I say, this is the right way to go. Eh? Invest in young people. The old people already know the way they are going. In fact, one of the interesting things that I keep saying about older people, I love them. By the way, I love older people because I gain wisdom from them. They give me a lot of uh, uh, guidance and all this kind of stuff. And they also give us money to do ministry. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I love, I keep saying about older people, is that older people have familiar patterns of sin. They already know their limits and they, they, they do what it is that is necessary for them to do. But, you know, younger folk have a very interesting range of things that they can do. And, uh, and when we are investing in them, we are doing the right thing in getting to shape lives and move them forward. So may God honor you for leading this and honoring these people. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. I believe it is in your Bible. Right? Are you there? In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. Now, if dishonor, that text uses dishonor. Mine says ignoble. That is like IG noble. That's like Instagram noble okay <clears throat> just in case you are following through 
Verse 21, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So let me pause there and try and, and, and let you know what that particular passage is saying. In a large house, even like this one, like this major house of God right here, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. So there are categories. Gold, silver, wood, clay. I, I guess that's the categories that they had in their time that they listed in scripture. But then it says, some are for noble purposes and others are not for noble purposes. Or some are honored and others are not honored. Why? Verse 21 tells us, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, the latter being the dishonor. Imagine going to the kitchen. And of course you know that there, there are several categories of utensils in your kitchen. Whether it is your own kitchen or your mother's kitchen. Kuna vyombo za kawaida na kuna vyombo za wageni. Right? You, all of us, even us who have talked about it so many times, even from the pulpit, we still have utensils for visitors. And what happens is that you, the utensils for the visitors are on the front floor display. We recently um, uh, uh, had some friends do a wedding and they, they decided to gift us, my wife and I, with a, with a box of, uh, they were brought a box of 60 pieces of, you know, stuff. So they decided to give it to us. And we had new things that were right here on the, on the, on the glass thingy. They were pushed back kidogo. And these ones were arranged over here. Right? So that when visitors come, because I know where I get the cup that I need. Okay, these guys have been to my house. We know where we get the cup that we need. If I need to take tea tonight, I know where to get the cup that I need and not the one for the visitors. So, so there are categories. But here is the thing. Even that kikombe amgeni, if it is not clean, it will not be used for noble purposes. Right? I cannot walk right into a house, take that cup or that plate, and decide to go and eat or drink from it. I, I can't just do that. I need to go and clean it first. And then now after cleaning it, then I can use it. Are we together? So when the Bible is talking here, it's not talking about that there are certain levels of depth of faith that are there. But it is possible that in our journey or in our talentedness or in our giftedness or in our exposure and experience to God, we have started attaining a certain stature. But no matter your stature, if you are clean before God, if you cleanse yourself, you will be used for noble purposes. So the value is not in being wood. The value is not in being clay. The value is not in being silver or gold. The value is in whether you are usable. Because I'd rather use a tool that is available than one that is so valued but it's not available. I did at this girl one time. I, I think every man has a story. Eh? I did at this girl one time. Man, you know, sometimes I walk around their compound. I did at this girl one time. Man, they had this supu car in their compound. Eh? It's one of those people that you date, but you fear everyone around her. So you can't see things going to places. You, you, you don't trust that she's even going to agree one day, you know? But they had this car. That was so good, but it had been parked in the house for so long, the wheels were not, did not have pressure. Everything had dust around it. From time to time, it would be washed, but it was not serviced. Neither was it moving. Very valuable, but very unusable. So the Bible says, in verse 21, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, from the dishonor, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, 
useful to the master, and get this one, and prepared to do any good work. At any moment, he can, with a short notice, he can be called upon to do, she can be called upon to do any good work. So how do you do that? But hey, just in case you're wondering, uh, does this someone have a topic? Does it have a point? Don't you worry. I'm one of those guys who will normally not have a topic, but I'll have a point. Now, now <laughs> Bishop Mark Karaoke at one point said, you know, if you hear him preaching and you don't hear the point, please say amen by faith. The point will come. So just in case you feel, man says his key point, don't be disappointed. <laughs> the point will come and it will be your appointment. Sawa, sawa. So just track through. We are, going to get, we are going to get somewhere. So how do we do this? How, how do we become the noble vessel that can be used whether I am in the gold, silver, clay, or wood category? The Bible says in verse 22, flee therefore the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace alongside those who are calling on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. He said that one more time. Flee therefore the, de the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace alongside those who are calling on the name of the Lord out of a pure, out of a pure heart. So this is the part of the sermon that I really like. <clears throat> story time. <clears throat> now I'm ready to tell stories now that I have said what I needed to say. So why don't we walk through an example of a vessel that was meant for noble purposes but ended up serving every other purpose apart from the noble purpose and then we are going to come to our conclusion. Is that okay? Is it? Let me tell you, eh? I preach in a church where I really try to draw an amen out of the people. And today, I'm being recorded on video. This idea is kidogo too. Just, 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 if I say okay, and if I say praise the Lord, just say amen. People will think that that's what they're supposed to do in the church where I go. Sawa, sawa. Is that okay? Yeah. Awesome. You can evidence up leo. If you have a Bible, turn to Judges chapter 13. I want to tell you a story from there. I want to tell you the story of Samson. Um, your pastor told me, please preach as the spirit leads. So the spirit led in this particular direction. It's important that we get to talk about these things because they are necessary for our walk. When you read the story of Samson, it runs from chapter 13 to chapter 16. I'm going to point out a few things. I'm not going to read through it, but I'm going to point out a few things that I think are important. Some of you might be familiar with the story. Some of you maybe are not familiar with the story, but it's going to bamba you. Uh, Bamba, for those who are watching us on TV and at home, is being captured. Um, the the Empress line is at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Samson was born at a time when Israel was in a lot of trouble. It was called the time of the judges, where Israel had fallen into a cycle of sin. They'd fall in such depraved sin that God would raise another nation to come and rule over Israel. And they would serve this new nation for many years. And after they had served this nation for many years, it will come a time when they would recognize, by the way, we used to serve God, and when we used to serve God, things used to be good, so why don't we go back to God? And they would go back to God and cry out to God. And God will raise a man or a woman, by the way, a kawa man or a woman, okay? So any vessel that was usable, God would raise them, and the only thing that differentiated a judge from the common Mwananchi was that the Spirit of God would rest upon him. That was the only difference. Same with Samson. Samson was a kawa guy. He didn't even, he was not even in the beard gang. He was just a kawaida, you know, Israelite. But the Spirit of God will come upon him, and he'll become a powerful guy. The Bible says, that the angel of the Lord appeared to the, to the mother and then again to the father and said, you're going to be blessed with a son, though they were barren. They told, you're going to be blessed with a son and his mission is going to be one. He will begin, chapter 13 verse 5 says, 
he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Very simple mission. He will begin the deliverance of the Israelites from the hand of the Philistines. He was born as a Nazarite. Okay, he was born as a Nazarite. A Nazarite is an individual who is dedicated to God. And the, in the Old Testament, they had this particular category. The only guy who seems to hold this category in the New Testament is John the Baptist. But in the Old Testament, there were many people who held this role. And the Bible says that when a Nazarite was born, whether they dedicated themselves to God for their lives or whether they did, dedicated themselves to God for a season, the Bible gave three rules. A Nazarite, when they were dedicated to God, number one, they would never go around anywhere where people were drinking. And they would never take any drink in terms of alcohol or wine or fermented drinks. Number two, they would not go near any dead body. In case you've ever read of when Aaron's sons died and Aaron could not go to bury his sons, it's because he was dedicated to God. That was one of the rules. And the third rule was as long as they were committed to God and dedicated to God, they would not cut off their hair. Now the hair was the external sign of the internal commitment that they have made to God. It's like wearing a wedding ring, right? This is an external sign that I am married to Marion, right? But not necessarily an internal commitment because I can carry this out, but my heart is very far away. But the external sign is supposed to be an indicator of what I have committed to within my heart. So Samson had this long hair that he's growing. He's not supposed to cut it, but nobody knows why he's growing his hair long. The external identifier was there. The internal empowering of the Spirit of God was on him. Nothing else was spectacular about him. But then, the Bible says in chapter 13, at the end of it, it says, and the Spirit of God started stirring up Samson as long as he was wherever he was. And then chapter 14, verse 1, the whole story of Samson goes down. Remember, his mission was very clear. He was supposed to begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And the Bible says, Samson came to his parents in chapter 14 and told them, Hey, I have seen a girl in Timnah, a Philistine girl. Now, remember, he's supposed to destroy the Philistines. But he decides to marry the people he's supposed to destroy. And once you are in loss, you're not going to destroy them. And the Bible says, Samson goes and tells his parents, get me for her. And the parents told him, Samson, there are many girls in Deliverance Church Zimmerman. And even if there are not many girls in Deliverance Church Zimmerman, there are many girls in Deliverance Church is there one in Kaha West. Right? And if Kikata, there is another one in Kasarani if you go that way. Kuna 45, Kuna Ruiro, you know, there, there are all these, I mean, you do not lack a girl in Israel to marry. Why would you go that particular way when you know your mission is clear? Now, in case you are looking for a point, here is point number one. When Samson rejected God's authority, it spoke to me that when you reject the authority God has placed over you, you are even going to reject God himself. When you reject the authority that God has placed over you, the visible authority, you are setting yourself on the path to even reject God himself. He rejected the counsel. And Samson insisted, no, I want to marry this woman from Timna. And he told his parents, take me to her. And they took her, him to, to go and get her for marriage. And the Bible says, they were walking... And they were walking in the vineyards of Timna. The path to get to Philistine territory from where Samson lived passed through the vineyards of Timna. Now, remember, Samson is not supposed to drink. He's not supposed to go near fermented drink. And the Bible was so particular, it said that if you are dedicated to God as a Nazarite, you're not only supposed not to drink, you're not supposed to go near any vineyard. 
You're not supposed to go near any grape vine. You're not supposed to be handling grapes. You're not even supposed to be playing around with the seeds or the skin of grapes. That's how particular God was. Because God knows we love playing around with rules. This conference is going to be able to get out of the way. And if you want to get out of the way, you can Na, na, na you know, we start finding loopholes. So God knew. When I tell them, don't drink, they are going to say, okay, I am not drinking, but I am around the drink to sanctify it. <laughs> I was told a story one time of a man who was told, they were told by the pastor, I never want in this church, if you are a believer, you cannot eat warthogs. And so this guy went and hunted a warthog. And brought it home. You, you know the story. Eh? And it's because I used to know some story in Nigeria, by the way. Maybe, uh, maybe it's borrowed. Um, um, you know, he brought home the warthog. And all the people in the church ran to the pastor to tell him, Hey, brother so-and-so has just hunted a warthog. And the pastor rushed to his house and told him, I said, if you're a believer, you cannot eat warthogs. He said, I am not eating. I just killed one. He brought it to the house. He started removing the skin to slaughter it. And people ran to the pastor. He is eating the warthog. He, the pastor came. The guy told him, no, I'm not eating the warthog. I'm just removing the skin. They went back and told the pastor, pastor, come. He is now roasting it. He's ready to eat it. He came and told the pastor, I cannot. If I leave the warthog over here, it's going to become a carcass. So I'm just roasting it so there is no smell. Then they ran to the pastor and told him, pastor, he is eating the warthog. And the, the pastor came running and found the guy eating the warthog. He asked the guy, what are you doing? And he says, I am tasting the warthog. By the time he was done, he had tasted the whole warthog. Because when we have a rule, it's very easy for us to find a way around it. And so God knew, and the Bible says in number six, God knew that for me to guard my Nazarites, I must tell them, you must not go around drink, neither go near any vineyard, neither go in near any grapes, or the seed of grapes, or even the skin of grapes. Very particular. But here is Samson walking in a whole vineyard, walking in a whole vineyard, going to Timnah. You know, one of the things that I'm really thankful about is the grace of God. Because the grace of God also brings the warnings of God. And when Samson was walking in the vineyards of Timnah, the Bible says a lion came out. Which is a very good warning. By the way, young men who are here, just in case. If you're going to a girlfriend's, your girlfriend's place and a lion comes out, that is God speaking to you. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> the other girlfriends on the other side of town. Sawa, sawa. A lion comes out, and the Bible says, and the Spirit of God came upon Samson, and he tore the lion as a man tears a young goat. Goat tried to tear a young goat. It's not an easy thing. But Samson just goes like, Parr. but then instead of going back, he proceeded ahead and ignored warning number one, but he broke vow number one. The vow that said, do not go near any drink. So he, he did that. And then he, they went, they talked to the girl, he liked her, he came back, they started preparing for the wedding and the Bible says, when they were going back the second time, Samson decided, let me go and look at the carcass of the lion and see what happened to it. Who goes to look at a carcass? You're driving on the road, you hit a dog or a donkey or whatever animal, then the, you know, a week later you're like, aya, kuna umbu niligonga. Or whatever it is that I was going. Watch out. Let me park. Let me go and see what could be happening with the carcass. And Samson boldly went there. And he not only went there, he scooped some of the honey that. Are you, are you, are you imagining with me? Turn on your spiritual imagination here. You know, he scooped some of the. Where, does, where would you find fluids in a carcass? In the stomach, right? That's where it is. So he's scooping from that. And all that kind of stuff. He scoops it. And he eats of it. And then he takes to his parents without telling them where it came from. Right? Now, 
Vow number one said, a Nazarite should not go near any vineyard. He's broken it. Vow number two said, a Nazarite should not go near any dead body. This guy is not only going to the dead body, he is scooping from it. And the Bible was so clear that even if someone, in number six, even if you're a Nazarite and a dead body falls in front of you, you don't respond to it. If it, yani, mtu wako hapa koslain, na ujui kama ni kukufa ama ni spirit, unamuondokea. You don't go. Now this guy is not only going to eat, he is scooping from it. Vow number two is down. And things are about to get worse for Samson. And the Bible says, just a moment, I don't know where my notes just went, but they are coming back in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor they are coming back. Come on, talk to your neighbor, tell them they are coming back. And the Bible says, he goes, they go now back to, they go back to, to their home. And some, Samson starts sharing with people riddles of what could happen in their midst. He, he goes and he tells the groomsmen that were around him that he had been given. He started telling them about stories of what had happened. Now, you have to note that all this time, Samson did not have any Israelite around him. He was hanging out with Philistines. He started telling them riddles and asking them, you know, from the strong came out something and from this came out the other. And he started playing around with their minds. You see, there is something about the faith that God has called us to. It is clear as day. For the wages of sin is, but the gift of God to those who believe is what? Is what? We know it, it's clear, but Samson starts playing around and giving out riddles and telling them, if you know the answer to the riddle, I am going to, to give you 30 sets of clothes. But if you do not know the answer to the riddle, you are going to give me 30 sets of clothes. Let, let me make a small point right there. When you're not living a disciplined Christian life, when you're not living a disciplined Christian life, you will start living riddles. I'm going to give you two or three. You're going to start building your life. You're no longer very clear to us which journey you're walking. You'll start living a riddled life. You'll start telling us stuff like, you know, is dating an unbeliever too bad? <laughs> you, you've heard those ones? Or oh, those ones don't happen here, do, 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 do they? Okay. Is dating an unbeliever, after all, a co-focused... Okay, he knows how to treat a lady, right? He's not like born again men who are focused and just sharing the word with you. No, we, we are going to plot, in fact, to men that kill a kid in blankets and wines and then we ended up with blankets and then everything else, but that's a topic for another day. You know, we, we've done everything of that nature to men that took a love to Kakorogwa, you know, all those kind of things. Because you start living your life as a riddle. Let me give you two more. Kwani, how far is too far? Do you guys bring you that question? Do you guys bring how far is too far? And I'll tell you, a person... One of the things that I know is when a person is asking me how far is too far, they have already gone too far. They want me to adjust their fatherness so that they can accommodate a bit more. But washaenda, they are now living a life of riddles. Here's another one from, for you. Should I tithe from net or from gross? Right? I, I hear that. Even from mature believers, they spend God's money. And then they start figuring, God, next month I'm going to tithe double to cover last month. Okay? So uh, next month, na, na kusort. So please still cover me with your hand. And then next month, unagundua, eh, the needs are more than the the money that I have. And so you tell God, okay, I will be doing this on a quarterly basis. Every three months, I'll be issuing something at a church at And so you keep, the fourth month, you realize things are not good. So you tell God, why don't we start again? Right? And now you start arguing with your pastor. Should I be tithing? The government, does it tax us from gross or from net? Huh? Where does the government tax us from? The gross. Should God bless you from the gross or from the net? Hello? 
But you start living a life of riddles because you have started playing around with that which is sacred. Right? Commercial break. Let me tell you, eh? I pull commercial break. So you're left-handed, my friend. It was Left Handers Day this week. Uliaka conference on this weekend to celebrate your left-handedness. Tunakujua, tunakulola, tunakuana. You know, there is one one of the things that I keep telling you, younger people. Let me say younger because I'm not very old. You know, one of the things that I've discovered is that sexual sin does not have a reverse gear. It doesn't. What excited you on day one will not excite you on day two. You have to do something extra. If a jama holds your hand, it is magic. It's magic. President Kingston, Akuna Kulala. Akuna Kulala. Yosiku Mwone, Yoyo Plastered Kingston. Akuna Kula, you don't even feel like sleeping because you are thinking, I have. Two days later, you're not interested in your hand being held. You want to intertwine the fingers because that's where the magic is. Are we together? Then, anakueka mkono around the shoulder. But two weeks later, around the shoulder is not enough. Lazima yeka karibu na. Right? You have a gift of touching. That's where your gift is. Anyway, moving on swiftly. That was not my point. So, you remember how we talked about authority? You remember how we talked about authority? Come on. You remember what, how we talked about authority? So here's another point. Samson never had accountability around him. No one around him was passionate about God. In fact, all the people around him were Philistines. And it was not going to go well for him. For that particular reason. And then the Bible says. The Philistines get, got the riddle. Samson got angry. He went and beat up some Philistines. And got these Philistines clothes. Now instead of getting them new clothes. He's now getting them mitumba. He brings to them. And then he goes away back to his home. Very angry. He came back to pick his wife from the father. And found that the father of this girl. Had given the girl to his best man. Because he thought that. Samson is too angry to ever accept my daughter as a wife. And so it brings another principle. It's not in my points, but it's a principle anyway. Be very careful who your best man is. Anyway, moving on swiftly. <laughs> she was given to his best man. So Samson, when he was told, your wife has been given to the best man, but she has a younger sister. He says, I'm not interested in the younger sister. I'm interested in the person that I love. And he was so angry, he went and caught 300, fo 300 foxes. 300 foxes. He went and caught three. You know, I keep thinking, if I was a fox and we are gathered, 300 of us, I would start asking myself, how is one guy bringing us together and we are under the, his command? There is something wrong. And then the Bible says, he paired them up in their tails. If I was a pair, I would start asking my friend, where? And say, to watch me had a rat. There is something... There is something going on over here that is not right. And then the Bible says he started putting on each one of them a pair or a, a torch on each of the tails. Now you can imagine 150 pairs. Zimeanza uko. Me by the time he's getting to us. Nishaenda. And that's what started happening. The foxes started going into the wheat harvest of the Philistine and Samson destroyed the whole harvest. And the Philistines were so angry at Samson, they came for him. Now the, the army of the Philistines is sent to Israel. Go get that man. They want to know, who is this Samson? And they come looking. And they're waiting for some jama, bad looking, 
muscles, whatever, worked out. Mikono iko hapa. Kids are just passing over here. You know, sabi ya vile mikono imekaa hivi. Juu ya vile umejenga. I don't even know how they move. Shingo hana. You know, they're looking for such a guy. Samson is brought out. And Samson is this, you know, guy, just kawa guy. And they're saying, Apana, we want Samson, son of Manoah. He's brought. And he told the Israelites, don't hand me over. Just tie me with ropes. And they tied him with ropes and handed him over to the Philistines. And the Bible says, when he got there, the Spirit of God came upon him and he tore the ropes like one will tear something that has wax. And he took a jawbone and killed over a thousand Philistines that day. I think there is a point there. I, I suspect. Because in the whole story of Samson, this is the first time you hear him hanging out with Israelites. Not, not, not by choice. By capture. Okay? Not by choice. Because sometimes you could be seated here and you have ignored every word from God. And then God, some guy stands up here and starts saying something that totally connects with you. You had not planned to even repent. But God particularly starts addressing something in your life. And you have to pay attention because God is capturing you. The other word is arresting you. And here's an important thing. Samson did not have an association with the right people. He did not have accountability, but he also did not have an association with the right people. Authority, accountability, association. He killed 1,000 Philistines. Now, by the time you kill 1,000 Philistines, you already know you're not welcome to Philistine ter territory at all. But then chapter 16 says in verse 1 to 3, but Samson found another beautiful woman in Gaza. And he went down there. Now, because the army is on alert, they decided we are surrounding the city and today Samson is not coming out. But then... Something happened that night, and I really believe it was the Spirit of God that woke up Samson. Samson woke up and went, and these guys are sitting on the walls, you know, <laughs> bows and arrows aimed, spears aimed, ready to kill Samson. But nobody knew that he was going to wake up at night. Samson wakes up at night, and the Bible says he went and he took the gate and the bus. Can you imagine the gate of a city? The gate of of a city, Konza City, because I'm going gate. <laughs> Tattoo City, because I'm going to get. Now, you're Nairobi, you're a lion, you're a lion. Okay, you're a lion. Okay. Can you imagine? Can, can you try and imagine? Mutu me kuja kwenyu, a whole estate, a mechukua gate by himself. And it's not only, unajua kuna kaget ka passengers, alaf kuna get ya gari. This guy literally took the whole gate together with the poles put it on his back and walked up a mountain and left it there. See, to a Peter, Madarao. You know, he takes it. <laughs> now guys have to rent transport to bring it back. Just because the Spirit of God was upon him. And then it says, as if that is not warning enough. Hello? I don't even understand. This could only be God. That the people did not kill him while he was removing the gate. See, that's a very good opportunity. That's a very good opportunity. But they did not kill him. And then the Bible says in verse 4, Then Samson went down again. And he went and found a woman. And this woman was called Delilah. In the valley of Sorek. And now the Philistines, because they can't tell what is the secret of his strength, they ask the woman, why don't you ask him, what is the secret of your strength? And so that night, Delilah asked Samson, what is the secret of your strength? And Samson said, if you take bowstrings, freshly made bowstrings, you tie me with them, you will know the secret of my strength. Some point that night, they wake up, and she says, Samson, the, the Philistines are already in the house, by the way. Tell Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Samson wakes up. Remember in chapter 15, he had broken from ropes. Eh? So already he knows I can do that. Right? Uh, hello? He already knows I can do that. 
by the ule ndiye anakuanga baba yake na najua kumtorokea so baba yake akitokea tena i know which angle to take you know like you are you are becoming an expert in sinning right so he already knows i can get out of this one right <laughs> so he gets out breaks the ropes the philistines are now scrambling for help Woo-wee, guy you know and then they are trying to get out of the house <laughs> and he, maybe some son is laughing and delilah is saying you you lied to me now the following night samson came back now if i was samson and somebody asked me how can i kill you because that's exactly what he was asked and you attempt to kill me i'm not coming back right if i tell you the only way you can kill me is by a knife alafu nikute wale jamaa waka hiyo magadhi you know the ones who you know had pitied over there and you had chongad the knife Nakula sapa because of the strength for the journey na kwambia nataenda choya nje hata singi choya ndani and I am gone but Samson came back again and the that night Samson came again and one day the bible says in chapter 16 verse 16 and Delilah nagged Samson day after day until he was tired to death that's the capacity of a woman who's asking you stuff you know some of you want to get married so let me help you here god has given men 5000 words per day and women 50000 some of us marry and people tell you hey ulio wa wife amenyamaza akwa ngemenyamaza ninyi amenyamazia akifika home she normally tells the husband everything So as a wise man you invest you understand my wife has 50000 words no kimnyamazisha they are carried over to the following day are we, are we together okay and so if you hear an argument in a house between a married couple the the woman is not being hysterical she's just being historical akona historia maneno so she's trying to bring it over there right and one of the worst things you can do as a man is apologize immediately because what is she going to do with everything that she knows okay and everything that she needs to say so no patia space ya kusema what she needs to say and so if you are a skillful man like i am right you give her opportunity to do other things like for example my wife leads our women ministry hapo akienda kuongea sema tumia kama 5000 words are we together She's an intercessor. Si akiongea na Mungu yeye ni 5000 nyingine. Tuko pamoja. Volume iko sawa? Oh. Ah, acha niachie hapo nimemuona. Ah. We have three children. Si kila moja wao 5000 words. Si mefika 25000. Si niko sawa sasa. Kwa sababu now men we are used to umesikia. Yeah. Sasa by the time she start she's a lecturer. You know she's also in school and all this kind of stuff by the time she's done I got 5000 nikona 5000 tunaambiana tu atuko sawa anyway moving on swiftly marion i love you marion your your mind need to be a story nyingi sana kabla ufike so i pray that nobody knows who you are so that they don't start telling you what i said before <coughs> so anyway so samson moves from riddles Akoku Samson moves from <laughs> Samson moves from riddles seems to the message <laughs> Harvest is about to happen Samson moves from riddles to telling the wrong person spiritual secrets Because there are some things you're not supposed to be sharing with some people. You are not in the same level. And Samson feels I can tell her what God told me. And the end of Samson's story. The end of Samson's story becomes even more horrible than when it began. Pastor Brand, the the first time i preached this i think i was on a strange fire I preached from this passage i entitled my sermon from judges chapter 16 help i am sleeping with my assassin because that's exactly what was happening samson is sleeping with a person who has told him i want to kill you how can i kill you they have prepared every utensil and everything and every plan to kill him but he's still there and samson moves from rejecting authority 
to ignoring warnings, to getting comfortable around Philistines, to refusing accountability, to now sleeping with his assassin. And it is possible that some of us are on that path of life. We were gold, we were silver, we were wood or clay, but we have been on that path of life where now we are not useful for any noble purpose, we are headed to the dishonorable purpose. By the way, side note for those of you who are interested. Samson prayed twice. Spiritual man being used by God very powerfully, he prayed twice. Twice. The first time Samson is recorded he prayed was after he had killed a thousand Philistines and then he asked God, how can I kill all those people and then I die in front of them? Right? Give me some water. And God allowed the water to come out. Right? Self-preservation prayers. The second time Samson prayed was when he had been blinded, put around to walk around the Philistines, and he was put in this arena where they were mocking him and mocking God, and he prayed, God, if you allow me this one time, allow me. And he was put around these pillars and said, I, I know how my life has gone, but this one more time, just allow me to die with these Philistines. Second time that he was praying. Because when you start taking such a path, some of the things that you start losing are essentials like prayer. Unakuta, by this, I don't have substance within me that will allow me to get to that stage. So let me go back to Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. In a large house, there are many utensils. Some of noble purpose, others of ignoble purpose, some of gold, some of silver, some of wood, and some of clay. If anyone will cleanse himself of the latter, the latter being the dishonor, he will become an instrument of noble purposes, made holy and useful to God, and prepared to do any good work. So how do you do? How do you become that Vessel, how do you move from that place where you are walking right? You are living right. You are useful to God for what is right. So let me end with these three points. One, the Bible says, flee therefore from every youthful lust. Flee therefore from every youthful lust. Fleeing is a kind of running where you see danger coming from one direction and you run in the opposite direction. They were protesting here last month. Was it last month or the month before? Just right on the highway. And you are driving on that particular highway and you find guys who have blocked the road and are throwing stones at, at the cars. You don't care what the argument is about. You don't care about who is right or who is wrong. All you know is that there is danger and all you know is that you need to flee. In fact, you encourage your bus driver, Rudy, hora esco. Even you, you know what esco is right then. Piga esco, piga esco. Akuna gari, akuna gari, akuna gari. And you're trying to guide everyone. You see somebody else escaping and you're asking, Sasa uyo nafanya nini watu wa paso noro? You know, you know how bus drivers talk about people with paso noro. Zoom to a paso noro. Nini ni nafanya? But everyone is trying to flee. Fleeing is a kind of running where you see danger from this direction and you go in the opposite direction. The Bible says flee from youthful lusts. You don't even need to plan for it. You hear it and you run. You sense it and you run. You smell it and you run. You know it is coming and you run. Youthful lusts. Now I talk about this, I know there's some older people who get excited. Tell them, pastor, tell them to run from youthful lust. Let me tell you, the Bible does not say lusts that affect the youth. It says youthful lusts. Now, I need to be careful here. It says youthful lusts. And I'll tell you this truth. Because there are some things that if you do not discipline yourself while you are young, they will affect you even when you are older. Zita kuumiza. If you are chasing skirts when you are younger and you never got disciplined, even right now, in a kusumbua, unless God is delivering you, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not coming back there in another time this week. Okay, so I can finish. Yeah. 
If you borrow people's money and you don't return and never learn the right discipline, even when you are older. Hello? There is a uh, solemn doy. One time I was telling a tafakari zababu. And he told this story of a teacher who asked a student, Niki kopea baba yako elfu moja, na mwenye duka mkopea elfu moja, baba yako atalipa pesa ngapi? One boy lifted up his hand and said, mahalipi kitu. Then the teacher said, wewe unyamaze. He asked again, Niki patia baba yako elfu moja, uh, mwenye duka mpatia elfu ngine moja, atalipa elfu ngapi? And the kid kept lifting up his hand. And he asked him, yes. He said, hatalipa kitu. The teacher told him, wewe haujui hesabu. The kid told him, wewe haujui babangu. Their father has become an expert because there is a youthful lust that he never addressed. Are we together? Kwa hivyo kama you are an expert in WhatsApp conversations, you are a manager of several hearts. Sijuka tuko pamoja. And I'm, I'm not just talking to men, I'm talking to ladies. Because even you ladies, kuna wase mnambianga good night 6 p.m. Right? Ndiyo mchukwe conversation na muingine. Right? And you are managing them. I'm telling you, even when you are older, itakusumbua. Flee from youthful lust, the Bible says. That's principle number one. Principle number two, it says, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Pursuing is the kind of running, remember, fleeing is the kind of running where you see danger coming from one direction and you run in the opposite direction. But pursuing is a kind of running that has purpose in it. It's directional, it's determined, it's profitable, it has thought, it has reason, it has direction. You know what you're looking for, so you go for it. So you're pursuing righteousness, you follow after it. You're pursuing faith, you follow after it. You're pursuing love, you follow after it. You're pursuing peace, you follow after it. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, Peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so you pursue it. Pursuing is being purposeful, strategic, energetic, organized about how it is that you're running. I, I, I keep saying, if, you know, if you're dating a girl and nobody else is chasing her, <coughs> maybe the value. Anyway, um, when I was dating, I was starting to date, to date my wife. Nimeacha. <laughs> when I was starting to date my wife, Kuna some guys, I think the Kiswahili word is vinyangarika, you know, who are coming around her. And you know, I was thinking, I want this woman in my life. And so what I will do is time her. Akitoka class, we were in Bible school together. Akitoka class, I know what class she is in. So niko kwa koridor, kaa ni mengoja, sinajua watatoka hivi? Kaa wamenda hivi? Niko kwa koridor, saa hapa hivi. So when I hear them coming, I start walking this way. Right? And then, hey, we talk a class. Hey, oh, at a minute, And we go, Nini, are your books heavy? Whose books are heavy? You know? But you carry them anyway. Now, we bear even all this kind of stuff. Now, we have to God bless you. Mutu anzangi now. Hey, by the way. Mutu anzangi now. Mutu anzangi now. Hey, God bless you. How are the studies taking you? Are you struggling with a particular unit? You know? Like how? Okay, okay, okay. I love who you refer to. You come and see me. You refer to somebody else. Yeah, I know, I know Joe is very good in that topic, but he's very busy. Unalalanga mapema ama unamkanga? Which do you prefer? Nasema, silalangi mapema sana, okay. Because I have about an hour or so, I could help you come with all the books. Now, for three or four days, you study. But you're also studying her. Right? I pursued, pursued, pursued. Mbaka haka ingia box. And some of you unataka tu, mm, kama box, kama koroga mnafanya. No, 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 no. You pursue. You have purpose. Till you get what you're looking for. And then it says, flee from youthful lusts. In fact, another version says, flee, flee from evil youthful lusts. Then it says, pursue faith, righteousness, love and peace. Then it says, alongside those who are calling on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. So run away, run towards, run alongside people who are calling on the name of the Lord 
out of a pure heart. Remember how I said Samson never had any Israelite around him? Right? Running with the wrong crowd will lead you to the wrong destination. Company determines accountability and strength for the journey. Yeah, is it Hebrews 12 that says, Seeing now that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us now run because there are all these guys cheering us on so that we can run the race that God has put ahead of us. It says, alongside those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Maybe you need to start sorting yourself and saying, there are some guys that I'm running with but they're not following after God. I need to get out of their company. I'll give you an example and get out of here. The, 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 you, you know the story of the crippled man who they brought to Jesus and the guys found they could not get to Jesus so they decided to demolish the roof. Uh, uh, oh, are we together? And they brought the guy down and Jesus seeing whose faith Seeing whose faith? Their faith. <laughs> Said, you are now whole. Let me tell you two fun parts of that story. I think these guys had carried this guy for so long. I tried to imagine they were watching the World Cup. Right? <laughs> watching the World Cup. See, their friend is here, lying down. Then they're watching the World Cup. Before you celebrate, like, you're like, Goal! And all of a sudden, now you have to explain. You can't cheer. And you're trying to watch the replay, but you're thinking, this guy also needs to. Ah, kaskia pana to mechoka kukuelezea game vile naenda. Ah, kuna pana. We are taking you to Jesus. Because they had heard what Jesus was doing. And they took him to Jesus. They brought him down. When Jesus saw these guys have gotten tired of this guy, they have decided to bring him. He saw their faith and he healed the guy. I will pray that you get people who walk alongside you who when you're in trouble and they tell you, hey, by the way, there is a girl. I'm in Nisumbua Sana. They go like, why don't we first go to Jesus? Before they prepare popcorn and cups of tea and go like, wacha, hey, kuja, ata na itakina milka, story leo tunaongea. story leo tunaisikia. We will know what we'll do. No, no, no. They go like, why don't we? In fact, one of the best ways to sort out the many people who call themselves your friends is start with prayer. Why don't we pray first? Right? People who can take you to Jesus when you can't go. That's number one. But there's something else interesting. They demolished the roof. They brought the guy down. I am sure the owner of the house came and greeted them. Hey, mukopoa. 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 That was so strategic. Sasa, wengine wakienda, munabaki. Because atulali, atulali, get friends around you who are willing to pay the cost for your healing. Yeah. Oh, here deal quick point. Get friends around you who are willing to pay the cost for your healing. Who will go like, okay, sawa, to taka around, as long as our friend is healed, we are going to sort out the roof business. Because I'm sure alikamatoa. Unajua kwa hapo wakiangalia guy, angalia anatembea. Na ni nyume. Unaitwa ni kama na wewe Zabu, na wewe Jaduthun, na wewe Ebenezer, DJ Ebenezer. You know like mnaki. Mnashikwa mnaeko hapo. The Bible says in a large house there are many articles. Some of gold, some of silver, some of wood. And some of clay. As I started by saying, I don't care what kind of article you are. What I care about is whether you are cleansed enough to be used of God. Whether you know that the purpose that God has for you, or you are walking the path of Samson, walking so far away from God that you ignore the very purpose that God created you for. And if you are going to remain on the right path, 
if you're going to avoid the path of Samson, then flee from youthful lusts. They will affect you. They will affect you. They will affect you. We were talking with Pastor Kibera a bit earlier. I think we met in 1998. Right? Met in 1998. 21 years ago. It looks like it's the other day. Right? Time, <laughs> time does not move as fast as you think. If you do not discipline yourself, you're going to find yourself at the same spot. At the same spot. There are guys who have been selling peremendes in buses since we were young. They are just hopping from one hopper to the other around the city. City hopper. You got it. Okay. I see how that one. Yeah. Just around the city. Just there. It says, flee from every youthful lust. Pursue faith, righteousness, love, and peace, but not just by yourself. Because there are some believers who go like, if I die, let me die in the army just by myself. No, 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 no. Go with others, but choose them carefully. People who are calling on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. Because we know this is one conference where we have dedicated towards walking, walking right and living right. I want to thank you because there are people who are taking that very seriously here. Could be some of us who came and maybe we came with the wrong purpose. We came just to get away from our family. It's a good break. And some of us who came because that's a story up in Nepal. People who came because others were coming. But we want to declare this moment as a moment where you can establish just the right posture of the heart. Refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart. For you, my master, ready, refine as fire, my heart is to be holy, is to be set apart. Set up for you. I choose to be. I choose to be holy. Set up for you. Ready to. With heads bowed eyes closed, I want to make two prayers. Could be here and you are asking God, God, would you sort me out? That's not who I am. I have been living this life of pretense, but I want to live a pure life so that you can use me. Let me tell you, the judges of the book of Judges were Kawa people, Kawaida people, that God poured out his spirit upon and they changed. God used them powerfully. It did not matter whether they were farmers or they were noble, God used them. You could be here and that's you. You're living a life of pretense, but tonight you want to ask God, God, would you change that for me? And you are here and you want me just to say a prayer for you. Just stand on your feet where you are. My time is up. They put that up so long ago. My time is up, but I love to pray for you. And you're here and you're saying, Pastor, would you pray with me? Because that's something that I would desire for God to change in my life. No need to pray for you. Just stand where you are. Just stand, stand up on your feet. Don't feel ashamed. These are good moments. This is a good conference for you to interact with God and to get sorted. 
and you're saying, that's me. I need to be sorted out. Just stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet. I'm going to pray for you. Just stand on your feet. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, brother. Isaac. Somebody else who said, thank you, sister. Thank you, brother, for standing. Just stand on your feet. This moment is not mine. This moment is for you and your God. They're saying, God, I need to be sorted out. Heavenly Father, would you look upon this ones? Would you look upon these ones? May I ask the ministers in the house just to make their way to some of these people who are standing just now. Just rise up to find you faster, faster. Just stand next to someone, uh, my team that I came with. Just go to one of these people that's standing and just lay your hand on them. Just minister to them. Just where you are, just to find raka raka. Let's just go and lay our hands on them and plead even for a word of mercy and a word of support even from God. There, there are people who are still standing. Let's, let's move. Those who are ministers, those who are leaders, those who are mature in our midst, there are people who are standing who are waiting to be, there are people right here behind you. Let's, let's go to them. Let's go to them. Let's go to them. Let's go lay a hand on them. Let's go embrace them. Let's minister to them. Marion, there is somebody just next to you. If you can lay your hand on him. No, just, just, just go to them. Just there's somebody else right behind you. Just go ahead and pray with them. Pray with them. This, this, this moment is a God moment. My sister, there is somebody right behind you. Somebody right behind you. There's another one at the back. A sister at the back. Just, just somebody go and pray with her. Let's, let's spend this, this moment just to lay our hands on them and pray. Pray for them. They desire for God to do something beautiful within their lives. Let's go ahead and make this a ministry moment. Because they want to be set apart for what is noble and what is helpful. But it will help them even walk with God. A closer walk with God. A beautiful walk with God. God, we pray that this moment will be helpful and of ministry to our brothers and our sisters. That they will know God in setting themselves apart. They will flee from lust that will hold them down. And even go to higher heights of pursuing what is right. What is of faith, what is of love and what is of peace. Even tonight as we trust in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As we pray for those people, you could be here. And you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Maybe you came with others because it was beautiful to come with them. Maybe you came with others because it was demanded of you. Maybe you're just here by good luck because God is here today. But you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Maybe you're even a backslider. But you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior tonight. If you are here and in our midst and that is your prayer, raise your hand where you are. I would more than desire to usher you into this warm relationship with God. Are you there and you're saying, I do not know Jesus Christ as my personal savior. But tonight, that's the desire of my heart. That's the desire of my heart. Just raise your hand where you are. I will see you. I will pray with you. Even on the balcony, if there is such a person, I will see you and I'll pray with you. Is there a person who says, I need that prayer tonight. I'd love to receive Jesus as my personal savior. And you are here. This is your moment. This is your time. It's a time to walk with God. And you desire for that to happen in your life. In your life. Is there one who says, that's my desire. That's my moment. That's the goodness of the Lord that I'm seeking for tonight. Is there, is there one who says that? And so Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because we know that your word does not come to us in vain. We know it comes to fulfill a purpose and we pray that that purpose is fulfilled at this moment. That purpose is fulfilled even as we continue walking with you. That purpose is fulfilled as we trust in you. I pray that Lord God would live here even better, even more enlightened, even more helped because we came into the house of the Lord. God spoke to us. God helped us. God created in us a new clean heart that is able to serve him wholly and righteously because we fear God. And so we honor you for this particular moment. We praise your name because we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or even imagine according to the power that is in your name. Refine us fire. Thank you.